was convicted of rape in 1992, and British law dictates that anyone convicted of a crime that carried a sentence of 12 or more months is deemed unfit to enter the country unless they can show compassionate reasons. The fight promoter, Frank Warren, is bitterly critical of the timing of the issue, saying over 20,000 people have already bought tickets. It was Heathrow's fight of fights. Mike Tyson in the middle of a seething scrum. At least one reporter trampled underfoot. Security had been stepped up for the Tyson arrival. Singer George Michael on the same flight. His appearance scarcely raising an eyebrow. I couldn't believe the welcome that he got. You know, the, I mean, the, the people so warm towards him. And there were a lot of people there. I've never experienced anything like it, certainly in, uh, in any time I've been involved in boxing. The circus began on the other side of the Atlantic. The former world heavyweight champion and his entourage tight-lipped. Has this been a distraction to you while this immigration stuff? Or? No comment, no comment. No, I'm fine. You're walking you good about it? Yeah. British immigration rules were waived to allow Tyson in for a fight. His conviction for the rape of a beauty queen would normally have kept him out of the country. On the one hand, people's abhorrence of his record. On the other hand, the inconvenience to members of the public, innocent members of the public, who by this stage had already got their ticket. Tyson, who was whisked through customs and immigration in 67 seconds, spent the night in a ritzy London hotel. The group Justice for Women is due in the High Court tonight to challenge the decision to allow him in, but doesn't expect Tyson to be deported, even if it does notch up a technical and legal knockout. I and Mike had actually arrived travelling light, barely a fraction of his formidable entourage accompanying him on Concorde from New York. They'll follow on other flights, and not just because his minders would have found the size of the seats a squeeze. Despite all the money he's earned, he owes millions. He'll be mightily relieved that the Home Secretary has chosen to override the immigration rules over his rape conviction. Financially, he needs the fight against Julius Francis, however long it lasts. Keep going, guys, please. Fight in Britain, after all, after a court dismissed a challenge by an anti-rape group. The women's group wanted Tyson expelled from Britain because of his rape conviction. The judge ruling that wasn't reason enough to stop the heavily promoted fight against Julius Francis. Tyson wasn't in court. He spent the day sparring with fans and shopping for cars. Iron Mike continues to be pure gold in boxing circles. He stands to make up to $20 million for the battle. Which is why he likes the early morning runs. Despite the impending fine, Tyson says he's enjoying being in Britain and says his next fight may also be on English soil. I think they were very successful on my behalf, yeah. And what do you think is going to happen after this? What's your next plans after this, after um, the fight? I won't have to make my next fight here again. Right away, it might, it'll be a second fight here after this. Do you know who you think, do you have any plans for another opponent after this or not yet? Well, I can't fight myself. I'm sure if one of the English champions go for another American opponent. What do you think about your reception here in uh, London so far today? Um, I'm very appreciative of how by If Lambeth Council had made it clear Mike Tyson was not welcome among the Brixton community, the feeling was not shared by the hundreds of fans who turned up at his hotel to see the former world heavyweight champion. Tyson has also made himself popular among London retailers, splashing out a reputed £1 million on jewellery. But today he was concentrating on training before setting out on his walkabout in Brixton. He explained to fans why he wanted to visit the area. I'm just happy to go there because as a, a black man, regardless of anywhere in the world, we should always pay homage to the area where our people are from. And that's Brixton and another place on the other side of town too. I think it's homage. I don't know. There's another. Hackney. 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 Hackney, 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 yeah. yeah. And I like to go there too. You want to go there? I'm a man. 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 When Muhammad Ali visited Brixton last year, he was given a hero's welcome. Tyson is hoping he'll get the same reception. Meanwhile, the boxer showed his religious side with a visit to a mosque in Regent's Park. Ross Appleyard, Sky News. Very much, uh, although uh, the fight uh, a week tomorrow in Manchester uh, with Julius Francis, the British champion, has uh, uh, provoked an enormous amount of interest within the world of boxing. I think the people that we're seeing uh, clamoring for autographs and uh, eager to get close to this man uh, are not only those who 
uh, co controversially perhaps admire him uh, as a, a figure from, the, from his community uh, who has achieved supremacy. Uh, but also I think there is uh, a great magnetism about anyone who is in the public eye. And a lot of people, certainly the crowds that we, we saw here today and, and the crowds in central London that we're looking at now, I think have just turned up because they want to get close in, they want to see him in the flesh, hopefully get an autograph that they can uh, take home with them. And I think a, a similar scene awaits him in Brixton. I think we have pictures of, of the crowds awaiting him. Uh, officials from the borough council have said he's not welcome, that he's a pariah. and. Uh, uh, Muhammad Ali arrived there uh, for hour after hour uh, in the hope of glimpsing him. No one knows me, no one has any kind of consideration for my feelings, my pain, anything I've ever been through in my life. You know what I mean? You have no, you have no iota what, who I am or what I am. Throughout his training, Mike Tyson has given every indication that he won't take the challenge of Julius Francis lying down. But now his preparations for Saturday's fight enter the final phase where the mental sparring is as important as the physical. Well, it's mostly just trying to keep him loose and uh, not have him too tight, you know, tight and stressed. You know, so we just relax the last two or three days of, uh, prior to the fight and, and go in there and do what we have to do. Tyson has one last training session in London this morning, then it's off to Manchester, and his fitness coach says everything's in place. He's been in good shape before, but he's a lot happier in his conditioning and training now. He's much more at ease and, and he loves to do what he's doing. Tyson has only fought 13 times in the last 10 years. Suspensions and prison sentences have made sure of that. To him, Julius Francis is just another obstacle as he fights his way back to the top. He was forced to use the back door. Once again, he was bemused by the hysterical reception that greeted him. His mind is, once again, unable to clear a people-free path to the door. The chaos and pandemonium he thought he'd left behind in London had followed him 200 miles up country. After a few minutes, Tyson made an appearance from a hotel window. It looked quite dangerous as he balanced himself 40 feet from the ground this was what the crowd had demanded, but unlike at Brixton last Friday, it didn't last long. And so, for the second time in five days, Mike Tyson has brought the city centre traffic to a halt, and still the crowd called for more. The crowd surged towards the hotel front, yelling for the former world champion. Eventually, Tyson appeared again, with a megaphone this time, calling that no one should get hurt, and now perhaps they should go home to their families. But just as the atmosphere began to calm down, Julius Francis, Tyson's opponent, made an appearance in the street. He was forced to climb onto the top of a police van as the crowd now mocked him. The British heavyweight champion, beaming with delight, had pulled off a clever publicity coup, extraordinary scenes, and totally out of character from this normally shy man. His police driver didn't look happy, but undeterred, Francis continued his impromptu...